Oh, you know, we do each and every time we hear Chef Steph also oh dope live here with another reaction and another video. Now, I did the Stephen A. Smith and Kwame Brown blog and the things that Stephen A. Smith had to say about Kwame Brown about basketball. Nothing personal. Here's another reaction where we have Charles Charles Oakley with Shannon Sharp speaking about Kwame Brown and how Michael Jordan invested in Kwame Brown. And um, y'all know we do each and every time we get here. Subscribe, uh, like this video, like the previous video. And, um, you know, we're going to get right into it. We, I ain't going to hold y'all. I'm going to try not to hold y'all on, but we're going to get right into it, y'all. Oh, you in DC, you with the Wizards when Kwame mm -hmm. was there. What right. happened with Kwame Brown? Why wasn't Kwame able to fulfill the potential that so many people saw in him? Well, he had a lot of potential. Uh, I think that uh, Doug was there and, um, you know, they drafted him, but they didn't work with him. Right. I think that's a lot that's going on in the league today. Kwame is real intelligent. Uh, he understands the game. But you know he has small hands. Um, you know sometimes you 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 put you, you can't get out of your own way. So right. I, sometimes I think that might have hurt the Kwame because, like I say, he was in trouble. He, he got in his own way sometime, and and he probably thought they didn't put enough interest in him. They drafted him number one. You hear what Oak said right away? Like you had a lot of potential. You know Jordan saw something in you. Uh, he mentioned the small hands thing. You know, uh, what you, you know, people rag on you about now having small hands. But, uh, you know, what I did research on that is plenty of NBA athletes that had small hands, too. You know, it didn't stop their progress. Um, he said that you got in your own way. So was it that you were stuck in your ways um, when you was when you had the opportunity uh -huh. to to actually when you had the opportunity to actually play? on that big platform such as the NBA, did you have the work ethic? That's that's the that's the big question. You see, I noticed with you, you you talk about everything other than really what everybody's speaking about. And what everybody's speaking about is your actual NBA career. And with Charles Oakley, and, and again, Charles Oakley isn't dissing you or even saying anything defaming. He's speaking about the game and the actual game you played for 13 years. Well, not 13 years, when, we, when he was on the Wizards with you. So this is somebody that actually played alongside with you. And he probably thought they didn't put enough interest in him. They drafted him number one, but sometimes when you draft somebody number one, you figure they can play. Right. So you got you to show, you show me something and put interest in you. So they might have didn't see that early. You know, they might ask him to do something. He probably didn't do it. They probably figured out, well, he's lazy. But when I went back down there to coach him the two years I was there, I mean, he, he wanted to work. But they didn't know him. They didn't get to really know him to see his weakness and, you know, what he do best. Right. So you probably – and, again, this and see, this is what I'm saying about your story, Kwame, how your story can help the future, the next future athletes. That's, that's um, for the future. You can tell – all the experiences and everything you went through in the NBA, being a number one draft pick and and sharing the, and sharing the things not to do that you did that somebody can learn from instead of being bitter and and being really messy and putting out people's business all because you wasn't satisfied with how you played in your NBA career. That wasn't on nobody else but you. You you. Like you said, I, I don't, and again, I'm not saying that you wasn't going any going through anything at that time period of your life. I know you was a, a young man and a teenager going into a, a, a man's league like the NBA. So that adjustment in itself is a lot of pressure. I get that. But you, you got to understand, too, it's a, it's a job that you're there to do. And a, and a lot of people are invested in you, especially for someone like Michael Jordan to handpick you like he did. Like Oak said, when you go first pick. You got to at least have some kind of skill set. 
And I know it was something that Jordan saw in you to, to choose you, number one, that you didn't even show him once you got there. Because uh, for, for whatever reason, you to them, they, that you didn't play to your potential. And it leads to confidence. And I watched another – I'm going to do another interview that Shannon Sharp did with uh, Al Harrington and Alan Iverson. I'm going to do that one as well when they spoke about you. And we're going to talk about it as well. But, uh, yeah, Kwame, it seemed like you got in your own way. You got in your own head. Uh, and, again, if you ain't – you can't teach killer instinct. You gotta already have that dog and wanting to wanting to beat, wanting that position because you're in a position that a, a lot of people would love to be in, and a position that people would have loved to have been in in the draft that came out later, but ended up being a, a bit uh, exceeding their, in their career beyond their draft uh, pick. People had low draft picks, but would became a, a very successful player, and. Um, Oak is saying that all here. No, they didn't get to really know him to see his weaknesses, you know, what he do best. Right. So that might have been a management uh, problem because they didn't spend time with him enough to really to see why he functioned, what his thought of mind is. So some people are not real strong, man. Some people right. need help. Right. That's why they said some people need to have pep talks. Right. You know, some folks you feel like they got to pep you up. So you needed uh, pep talks and somebody to build you up, to believe in you, for you to believe in yourself. Uh, I get it. Like like Oak said, people do need that. But you and I know, uh, KB, that you're in the NBA, bro. That's your job. That's what you dare to do. You dare to work on your craft and be the, and, and be the best at what you do. The work ethic has to happen. You can't just say, okay, I'm in the NBA and I'd have made it. No, you got to work. Like, as you can see, you see by not working where it got you and to project all these uh, nasty things on people now that has been 20 some years and you was tired of being the butt of everybody's joke. You only had became the butt of everybody's joke because of how you decided your NBA career wanted to be. Nobody would have nothing to say to you if you lived up to your potential. And I'm not saying you had to go out straight up, straight up killing motherfuckers on the court, um, being a first pick, even though that's not the case always sometimes. But it, it, like Oak said, at least has some kind of skill set and a dog in you that's willing to learn and sharpen the skills that you already had already. Every game, he might have needed that, and they didn't get in that. Right. Do you do you think Jordan was hard on him because Jordan was trying to win championship? And a lot of guys, he, a lot of guys like LeBron. LeBron ain't trying to work with no rookie and get them ready to play. He wants veterans, guys that understand how to play, so we can compete for a title. I ain't got trying to babysit you. And see that what I was saying too. You got to have somebody on the sideline pepping you up to get you to play to your potential. That's that is like a form of babysitting. And Shannon Sharp got a point. Like. You in the NBA now. You get it. You got to get it. We, we all seen the Last Dance documentary and how Jordan was riding them in the 90s when he was there. So I can only imagine a, a more a, a older Jordan and the knowledge he has and the potential that he's seeing all the players that he's around and how he pushes them. And some people are built for it and other people weren't. And this is just another case where I think that psychologically, KB, you probably wasn't there, which spoke in your game because that that also took away from your game. Well, I was I, I didn't see Mike really. You know, he might have said, "Damn, Kwame catch the ball, shit, right. something like that." But he didn't ride Kwame like you know. I mean, he, he invested in you, so he he wanted you to do well. He didn't want you to don't accept. You know, right? He wanted to. Look, what you had in you, he might have been doing it to see what you tough minded enough. Right. But I don't think he was riding Kwame like that. They might have, they might have talked about him in a way that was when they seen he wasn't feeling it was working out. But I thought, I thought he had all the talent. But like I said, he might have put enough work in to get better. He might have just stayed at the same level. But seemed like later in his career, he got more hungry because I guess things when things ain't going right. You want to get, you know, you want to get better. Right. You know, 
it might have been too late to get better, and then people didn't have no trust in you. When people don't have trust in you, that ain't good. You know what to, you know what to do. And there you have it from the words of Charles Oakley. Uh, it's It just come down to a confidence thing for what I'm hearing from Charles Oakley. When people depended on you to, to do something, you expected to do it. And if you can't, if it work, there's always room for growth, period. You got to want it for yourself first. Uh, to put blame on other people on how your career went, you can't blame nobody but yourself. And this is just another case of accountability. And I also want to point this out as well to KB, that if you if you look at what you're doing with the whole uh, situation between you and Gil, and you was upset with what Gil did, or speaking on your behalf and saying that if somebody asks about you to say you're not answering any questions about you, you didn't even have that same energy with uh, Charles Oakley. And he spoke about you. Shannon Sharp asked him a question about you. He spoke from his perspective. You said you respected it. So I'm trying to understand what was more different. And I think Charles Oakley went more in debt than Gilbert Arenas. Gilbert Arenas had nothing but nice things to say about your game because he saw the potential like Charles Oakley did as well. Charles Oakley said he saw your potential, but the confidence wasn't there. And and also added that you had small hands and stuff. And it's just added on top of it as well, as, you know, from his perspective, when Gil didn't get too much into, like, you know, your, your build, but the actual game of what you, sh- you could have been and what, you know, people saw in your game. But yet you, you get mad at Gil for speaking on you, but not Oakley, because you say you had a conversation with him in real life. You had a conversation with Gilbert Arenas in real life. So what's the difference? See, it seems to me that you know you seven, you're a seven footer, and and Gil is, you know, what you say, six foot three, and you know, Oak is is a, is an older man, but we're pretty. We're, Oak about six eight too, but he a big guy too, and and not saying you was intimidated or anything, but you you know the difference. Uh, to and it's almost like you went at Gil because of that. And I think that's that's not even right because Oak spoke on your behalf as well. You didn't have no issue with that, but Gilbert did the same thing, and you called called out Gilbert for having for having for playing white boy tactics. So would would you say that what Oak did was white boy tactics as well? I'm just saying, man. This is it's not a good look, bro. That's all I'm saying. You you got to be real. We if we gonna say we real and keep it real, then let's keep it real. And all this stuff is on video on YouTube for all of us to see. I'm just saying, man. But y'all down in the comment section, tell me what your thoughts on this Charles Oakley and Shannon Sharp interview on Club Shay Shay. Shout out Club Shay Shay. Uh, Shannon Sharp's platform for giving insight on uh, sports and the behind the scenes and stuff and talking with players and actually showing viewers of what went on behind the scenes that we didn't get a chance to see. What's your thoughts down in the comment section below? To, uh, about what Charles Oakley said about Kwame Brown. Uh, put it down in the comment section below. Subscribe. I am Chef Steph. Also, Dope Live.